Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got 10 kettlebell exercises to test out your mobility. Pass or fail, what's it gonna be? But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos on resolving aches and pains, preventing injury, and overall optimizing your performance. And it doesn't get much better than that. So go ahead and click that button. Ready? Let's get into this one. All right guys, 10 kettlebell exercises that are gonna test your mobility from head to toe. So we're gonna be looking at overall shoulder stability, thoracic mobility, the ability to brace and properly organize the spinal column, your hip mobility, knee stability, ankle mobility, it's gonna touch every aspect of it that you can imagine here. So the basis of these kettlebell exercises and the test of it will be um, kind of based in six functional movement patterns. So we're overall looking at squat, hinge, lunge, push, pull, carry, in a sense, they just might look a little bit different with the variations that you see here. And with that, I want you to take this as a pretty much pass or fail test here. So can you do these things loaded? Um, and what percentage of your actual body weight can you load them with are ways you can look at it, but strictly pass or fail, can I complete th these exercises with some load to it? Um, and I'll be a little more specific with certain exercises if it pertains to that. So take that in mind. Let's see how you guys do. If you guys find out that you fail, you're more than welcome to join me for my spring course, which is now open. The registration is open on the website, and I'll put that link down below, which is solely focused on improving your mobility. So resolving aches and pains, uh, really addressing those first, making sure that we're setting you up for injury prevention and mitigating any risk of injury, and overall optimizing your performance so that in the future, you have the skills to actually perform these exercises with load and well. So take a moment, drop by the website and go ahead and register today. I will see you guys in the spring course. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our 10 kettlebell exercises to test your mobility. Exercise number one, the overhead squat. So for the overhead squat, we're going double kettlebell, really testing out our ability to stabilize the shoulders, brace the spinal column in a nice neutral position, and obtain a deep flexion of the hip and the knee, creating stable knees through external rotation of the hips, as well as having the ability of the ankle to dorsiflex well. So we're really testing all the joints from foot all the way up through the shoulders in this one. Now, in this position, we wanna make sure that we're able to break 90 degrees at the hips, and if we don't have the mobility that we should at the hips, the knees, and the shoulders, in the overhead position, you're not gonna be able to perform this one bottom line. So, in this position, we're really testing all the above there that you can think of. Shoulder stability, core bracing, and the hip and knee mobility, as well as that ankle dorsiflexion here. Exercise number two, the Cossack squat. In the Cossack squat, we're looking at movement on the frontal axis of the sagittal plane. So here we're looking at our ability to stabilize and brace and move laterally side to side into a squat position. Now in this, we're gonna start with a nice wide stance. We want the kettlebell up at the chest and we're holding it in that, um, that chest front rack position here. And then from there, we're lowering into the full depth, trying to get all the way where the pelvis is actually touching the floor on one side and then being able to stand back up from that position. Exercise number three, the Turkish get up. All right, this is a big one, a doozy. Are you able to get up from the floor with a load with only one arm if you really had to? And do you understand the actual movement mechanics to effectively be able to get up? Do you have the mobility to actually perform those mechanics? And those are all big things. You're gonna see pretty much everything in this one movement here. Shoulder stability, we're moving through every plane that you can imagine in the body pretty much 
twisting in the transverse plane, we've got the frontal plane and the sagittal all included in this one movement. A lunge is what's in there. We're also looking at the overall ability to stabilize that shoulder with weight throughout the movement and our overall capability to, once again, get up and down to the floor with only one arm available. That is a big thing. Exercise number four, the Z halo. The Z halo is gonna be a straddle sit position here and we're really assessing basically our overall thoracic and shoulder mobility and that incorporates the ability of the scapula to uh, glide appropriately and move appropriately around the rib cage on the upper back there and the glenohumeral joint having full access to its range of motion what we really are looking for is that in this position, when the kettlebell is going around the head, we want to make sure that I'm not moving into a head forward posture to actually dodge the kettlebell, but I'm able to actually allow the kettlebell to make a full circle around my head and back to the chest without having to adjust my body. So the shoulders are overall what we're looking at, do they have the full capability, but in order to have that capability, I also have to have the thoracic extension and the ability to overall organize and stabilize the spinal column from a seated position where my hips are in flexion. So organizing the spine in a seated position in flexion at the hip is also a big part of this. Shoulder stability and that bracing of the core in flexion at the hip. Exercise number five, the Z get up. So in this variation of a get up, we're actually going through a lot once again. We have a double loaded kettlebell, so one in each front rack position here on each side. So we're now able to get up from the floor with no hands plus a load. And that is a huge part. We're gonna be able to get into a 90-90 sit position, a shin box position, a lunge, and then all the way up from that sitting position to standing, organizing the spinal column once again with hip flexion to start and a double load, and then being able to actually stand up and take that load up to fully standing and return back to the floor once again from that position. That is just as big as the Turkish get up, if not more. So we're looking at two different capabilities, one from the back there and then the other from a nice seated position with an added load to it. Exercise number six, the bent press. So in the bent press, we're really looking at your ability to perform an effective hinge movement, a hinge pattern from the hips. And believe it or not, this movement is less press and more hinge than anything. So when we get into this position, we need to have the ability to actually stabilize, first of all, and rotate the spinal column while hinging at the hips. And this is a quality that takes skill and practice. Being able to rotate first, let the kettlebell ride the forearm, see if we have the thoracic mobility to rotate from this position, and then actually hinging underneath the weight rather than thinking of pressing the weight toward the ceiling. So I'm actually lowering my torso rather than lifting the weight overhead. And this one, once again, really testing those mechanics in the hinge position. Um, and then from there, the spinal twist with core brace and shoulder stability once the weight is up overhead, being able to actually stand back up and rotate the shoulder in the socket to keep it in a nice stable position. Exercise number seven, the kettlebell arm bar. So in this position, we're actually starting on our back and transitioning to our belly looking at overall our thoracic ability to rotate and our ability to stabilize the kettlebell in this position and then eventually press with power from it. So once we get to that belly position, we're actually allowing the weight to come in, testing the range of motion of the elbow, of the shoulder, and the overall movement of the thoracic spinal column, making sure I have that rotational ability there. And then the actual strength to brace the core in that rotation and press out from there. Exercise number eight, the windmill. The windmill position is once again looking at our ability to stabilize the shoulder in the overhead position, but also rotate the spinal column and brace 
and hinge at the hip again. So it's very similar to our bent press overall, only we're eliminating the actual movement of the arm and already starting in the overhead position to begin with. We're looking at this hinge with a straight leg position on one side more so. So you should see a slight difference in the leg positioning as well at the knees. Um, we don't have the same knee stability as far as the bent press would go compared to the windmill here. We have more of a sole focus of a fully extended leg and the hip extension from that position. Exercise number nine, the suitcase hold or the suitcase carry. So in this position, we're using two kettlebells and since it's called a suitcase carry, the weight should at least be 50 pounds on each side because we're maxing out our suitcase, we're going on a long trip. So let's go ahead and test it out that way. And we wanna make sure that when we are holding and carrying the weight that our shoulders are able to fully externally rotate. So that means that our palms are slightly facing forward or thumbs are at least making slightly a V shape with the point of the V being behind my back. Um, and the weights are being carried in line with the side of my body or even slightly behind my body here. And just overall looking at our ability to stabilize and brace the core well in this position. We should feel like the pressure, there's tension through the quads, tension through the glutes, abdominal pressure, intra-abdominal pressure, and overall a stability at the upper back and shoulder blades in this position. I shouldn't feel like my traps are shrugging or the shoulders are shrugging to hold the weight. I want to just let those suitcases just hang from my body down at the side. And my real test is my ability to organize and stabilize and brace that spinal column in this position, which is why the hold is the very first place to begin. And if you get pretty uh, capable of the hold, then we should progress to actual farmers carries or walks from there. And last but not least, exercise number 10 is the briefcase hold or carry. So as you can imagine, a briefcase in this case is a single-sided carry, basically taking out one of those um, kettlebells from the previous exercise of the suitcase carry. And normally we're not carrying around two briefcases, so I figured it was an appropriate name for it, and I've heard it somewhere before. But in this one, once again, we're looking at our ability to stabilize and brace the spinal column with a unilateral load. So now there's a little extra work being done on the opposing side from the kettlebell. And we're still looking at, can we organize a spinal column in this position? Am I shifting the hips toward the weight to help carry? This is one of the most common things that you'll see in a unilateral carry. And it's one of the most dysfunctional things we see when we're trying to do functional stuff at home. like carry something one-sided, as you can imagine, come up with whatever you want there. But the shift of our spinal column to actually carry the load or help out with the load is something we really want to be aware of and avoid in this hold and eventually in the carry as you progress it. So we're looking at that spinal stability in the, with that lateral, plane, lateral, lateral hold there um, to the side, trying to pull you into a dysfunctional shape and can you hold it, can you maintain it? On this one, you can go anywhere from 35 pounds up, somewhere in there, to truly test your ability on this. All right, and there you guys have it. 10 kettlebell exercises to test your mobility. Did you pass or did you fail? Leave your comment down below letting me know whether you pass or fail on these exercises. And if you failed, I'm really urging you guys to join me for my spring course. Once again, go ahead, drop by the website, it's down below in the description, and register today for the course. I promise we, have, we will have you guys moving in the direction of being able to perform all these exercises, having the skills to address aches and pains, and really just setting yourself up and mitigating any risk of injury in the future here. So join me for that course. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by putting that big thumbs up down below and share it with a friend. Let's test out their mobility and see how they do. Maybe challenge them to it. See how many they can pass versus what you pass. You know, at least if you failed, make yourself feel a little bit better about it or something along those lines. But go ahead and share it with them. And if you haven't already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss out on resolving aches and pains, preventing injury, and overall optimizing your performance because that's what we're all about on this channel. So hit that button. As always, I wanna thank you guys for watching today. 
We'll see you next time.